In a world where being a peeping Tom is encouraged. They just want to look at you. They're out there. And where all the monsters can't help but be little perverts. What is that? What are they doing? Applause. They come every night. One woman will give them a show they won't forget. Diddly dee, are those things for me? Don't you want to know what they are? M. Night Shyamalan's The Watcher. Now, if you've watched my previous reviews, you know I have certain rules. And one of those rules is I don't waste my time with movies or shows that I know are going to be bad. Which is why I didn't do a review on Furiosa or The Acolyte. But every now and then, I will give a movie a chance despite my better judgment. And so was the case with M. Night Shyamalan's new movie, the Watchers. If you watch my streams, you know I'm a big horror fan. Are you alive? No, he's dead. Oh shit. Well, nothing to lose now. And in particular, I'm a big fan of liminal space horror and creature features. And with The Watchers' vague promise of both, I was intrigued, despite feeling like they really wouldn't be able to pull it off. But with hope in my heart and a dirty candy bar in my pocket, I went to go see The Watchers. And unfortunately, I was right. Again. This movie heavily takes from a certain horror TV series I know of, and funny enough, it has all the same narrative problems of that TV show. Did you learn nothing? Basically, this movie starts off with really interesting ideas, but it has no way of resolving any of them. So instead, it just keeps adding more ideas, hoping no one will notice. But then it realizes it has to actually have an ending, so it rushes and throws something together that makes absolutely no sense at all. Which leaves the audience feeling like they just wasted their time. Because they have just wasted their time. And the really sad part about it is, with just a few simple edit changes and some story tweaks, this could have been a really good movie. So for my hoity-toity critic score, I have to give The Watchers a 4 out of 10. And for my schmo score, my rating for the average Joe Schmo, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now, this is the part where I explain my ratings, and I can't do that for this movie without talking about some massive spoilers. So, if you want to watch the movie spoiler-free, this is where we part ways. Thanks for popping by, and I hope you have a nice day. As always, let's talk about the good things first. This movie is shot very well. The acting in it is fine for the most part, and the initial hook for this movie is good. It really pulls in the audience. I also think this movie does a really good job of slowly revealing the creature over time. Part of making a good narrative is delivering the right amount of information at the right times. And nowhere is that more important than in a creature feature. The worst thing you can do is reveal the monster in broad daylight within the first five minutes of the movie. Why would you do this? Bad, incompetent writing. So in that regard, Watchers does a pretty good job in revealing their creature. However, they completely fumble the ball in revealing other important information, which we will get into later. As I mentioned earlier, this movie is heavily influenced by the TV series From. They're both about people mysteriously wandering into a liminal space that they cannot escape from. They both have scary creatures that come out at night. And if you're caught outside at night, you die. They also took some of the same aesthetic ideas like the creatures living in a hole during the day and them collecting a whole bunch of old stuff. Unfortunately, this movie also seems to have taken all the bad narrative problems from... Well, from... 
I believe From has two seasons out, but it is clear that they have no idea where they are going or how they want this series to end. So they just keep adding new ideas to keep people engaged with the story. The problem with that is, eventually, people catch on that you are not resolving any of the plot lines you have started and they lose interest because they can't trust you not to waste their time, which is why I stopped watching From. It was wasting my time. And The Watchers does the same exact thing. The Watchers has a really good hook and a good premise, and that's it. There's just a bunch of half-hearted ideas that go nowhere. And I have a really good example that not only shows this, but also, like I mentioned earlier, shows how they messed up in certain areas when providing information to the audience. So in the first 10 minutes of this film, it's hinted our main character has a tragic past that they are running from. Now, they don't just come right out and say it, but it's pretty obvious she feels responsible for her mother's death. So you would think that they would wait to reveal this information at a dramatic, poignant part in the film, right? Nope. They just randomly show us in a flashback that's just sandwiched between two random scenes. It's not a hallucination, it's not one of her dreams, it's just put in there, like an accident an editor made. And the worst part, not 15 minutes later, she reveals this information to the whole group. What was the point of showing us, the audience, the flashback when you did? Because you're essentially now having us watch the same thing twice. What are you doing? Bad writing, that's what you're doing. Now the point of many horror movies, not all, is to personify a real world fear or issue in hopes of finding a way to overcome it. And I assumed the tragic issue of guilt that the main character feels was going to be the core of this movie. And it kind of was? Not really though? I assumed there was going to be a point where all the members of the group reveal that all of them have some sort of issue like the main character does, hinting at some sort of reason as to why they are there. And at one point, one of the character does. We learn that he is also responsible for someone else's death like the main character. And then… that's it. We don't talk about anyone else and it's all just forgotten until the very end where they try to make the whole movie hinge on the point of forgiving yourself. You can't make that subject the core of your movie when you've only mentioned it like three times during the whole film. Like I said, a lot of half-hearted ideas that have no real resolutions. And of course, there is a twist, because it's an M. Night Shyamalan film. Which is fine. The problem is, it becomes painfully obvious what the twist is, like 10 to 15 minutes before they reveal it. And when they do go to reveal it, they take so long to do it. And by that point, the audience already knows what it is. Just say it so we can move on now. You're wasting our time again. But the worst part of the twist is that it completely destroys the entire narrative by making all of it not make sense anymore. And here is the five biggest plot holes that don't make any sense. Massive spoiler alerts, obviously. How is it that people who have been living in this single room for months never once lifted up the only carpet in that room to find the secret bunker underneath. How? How did a guy build this crazy, elaborate bunker in the middle of a near-escapable hell? I know he mentions in his video logs that he would bring no more than 13 workers at a time to work a single day, and then he would sacrifice them at night to the creatures. So what you're telling me is in that what, for the one to two months it took to build this massive bunker, you were essentially making 13 people disappear every single day and nobody noticed? Okay. Also, you're telling us that not only did he manage to magically capture one of these creatures all by himself, but the creature he did catch just happen to be one of these halflings that is half human? Which, coincidentally, your entire ending hinges upon it being one of these halflings. I guess pigs really do fly. If the halfling 
knew about the secret bunker because we saw footage of it jailed in the bunker. And if there were videos in the bunker explaining how to escape the woods, because that's how they escape, why, oh why, didn't the halfling just leave years ago? It even says at one point, I was trapped in the woods just like you. No, you weren't. You knew about the bunker. You had access to the videos. You could have escaped at any time. Well, you see, the videos were on a Windows operating system, and we all know that the evil creatures are all Apple people. Lastly, if the halfling's plan is to kill the main character and take her place, why doesn't it just do it already? Why does it just walk around the house for like 10 minutes going in and out, in and out of the house? And why did it sit down and have coffee with her for like 30 minutes? Why? Why are you doing this? Bad writing, bad writing. It's another M. Night Shyamalan film that starts off really good and then falls flat on its face at the finish line. Unfortunately, we've seen this all before. Ugh. Anyways, that's all I got to say about it. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you and I'll catch you at the next one.